Hey guys! So Jane and I have been chatting about um, the new format for our vlog that we'll be releasing once, roughly once a month, it'll be sort of every four weeks. And we've decided that we would like to pop some tutorial videos in as well as us sitting there and just, you know, blah blah as we do. So our first tutorial that we're going to be doing for you is about gel press painting. So I've been running some workshops on the gel press printing um, recently uh, and it's Australian native florals but I've had a lot of questions from people about the gel press and how it works uh, so I thought we'd pop on today Jade's in the background hi Jade <laughs> and we'll have a chat with you about what you need um, where you can get supplies from uh, and all that interesting jazz so without further ado let's get to it I'm going to ask questions. Jay's going to ask questions, so you'll hear her from behind the camera asking you'll see questions. Me in a, you'll see me in a moment. Right. So Mel, um, we've got gel plates. Yep. What are they? So I've actually Googled, till the cows come home, what, the synthet what these synthetic ones are made from that you can buy pre-made, and I actually can't find what they're made from. I have no idea. But you can actually DIY your gel press, um, your gel plates. They're made from gelatin and water and what was the other is there's uh, rubbing alcohol and glycerin glycerin yeah glycerin gelatin and water yeah so the but they're the ones you have to keep in the fridge, fridge if you yes. only use those three ingredients you're going to keep them in the fridge i've seen other recipes where you can also add uh, rubbing alcohol as well and then you don't have to keep them in the fridge because the ones that you keep in the fridge can tend to go moldy after a little while yeah. as well well because gelatin is if you're using non-vegan gelatin yeah. it's from yeah. animals yeah so it's gonna go gross we have Jade and I have done a lot of back and forth about whether or not we wanted to make our own and we've just decided that because we do use it so often it's easier for us just to invest in these ones these are from Zart Art you guys can actually buy these online they retail this size retails for about $60 and they go up or down from there so this is the Zart brand Okay, so this one is 20 by 25 centimeters. This is the size I personally like to use because it's roughly the size of an A4. It's just under the size of an A4 sheet. You can get smaller ones uh, if you didn't want to spend quite as much and you can also get one size bigger as well. So that's the gel plate. So Mel, do you need printing ink? No. No, no, I don't, I have never actually used printing ink on these. I just use acrylic paints. You will want to stick to the slightly thicker acrylic paint. So um, the satin acrylic that we sell here and the dimension acrylic, which we also sell, work really well. Uh, I have used the kids' paints as well. They are a little bit runny, uh, so you just don't need to use quite as much of them. So you're, what you're looking for is a bit of tack. Yeah, quite a bit of tack. They can't be runny kids' mm. paints if you want to, to have more control. control. It's fine mm. if you're happy to just let it go, but these ones are a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the metallics, I just mm. use kids' paint because I use too much paint and metallic paint can be a little bit expensive. But, and then, yeah. What sort of paper are you using? So the paper I'm using is 110 GSM. It's Jazz Art brand. I get it from Officeworks. Copy paper, which is 80 GSM, is really not great because once you get a certain level of paint on there, it's going to start getting a bit mushy and it rips. So you do want to go for at least 110 GSM. It works even better with thicker paper, but this is the minimum that I would work with. And your roller, is it a hard or soft So roller? this is a rubber brayer. Brayer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your standard printing brayer. So this is what, if you're, you've done any printing throughout your life, this is what you probably would have used. It's just a black, hard rubber brayer, which this one I haven't actually cleaned properly. It's a little bit sticky. Um, you can use foam rollers and things on there. It'll just give you a slightly different effect. You can also paint directly onto the gel press as well. We're only going to be looking at the rolling today, but you can paint and things onto it as well. Okay. Well, what if we bring the camera up closer and we'll do some printing? Sounds good. To start with guys, I've just laid out everything here that you're going to need for today's tutorial. 
we have our pile of A4 110 GSM Jazz Art copy paper, uh, the gel plate, which I have actually laid out on a piece of white paper with a board underneath it. But that's just so that I can see the colours that are going on. You don't necessarily have to do that. Putting it on any hard um, white surface will be fine if you've got a tray or something like that, or even just straight on the table. Your rubber brayer. So this is a standard printing rubber brayer. The paints I'll be using today are the Montmartre Satin Acrylic, the Montmartre Dimension, and the Educational Colours uh, Metallic Paint. I will only be using the primary colours, white in the dimension. These ones are our warm palette. And then I will also be using in the cool palette, the satin acrylics. So this is to do with our colour theory that we had a chat about in our last vlog. So if you want more information on the warm and the cool palette, head on over to our vlog to see that. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, I'm going to start with a warm palette. So I'm going to use um, the red, the yellow and the white to begin with. Might go for a nice peachy pink, I think. So when we're laying down our colors, we want to try and start with our lightest color first. So that's going to be our white. So I'll just lay down a few dots. You do not need huge quantities of paint. You'll see when I start moving the paint around with the brayer that it spreads quite well without needing huge quantities. I'm just going to put a little bit of red and then we will follow with the yellow. So this process is very much about the process. So I go into it understanding that if I put these colours down on the plate, then I am going to get a certain result. So maybe you've already made a colour wheel. Yeah, so I've already made colour wheels and I have, I've done this quite a few times. But don't be afraid to experiment. If you don't know what's going to happen, it's totally okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and start rolling these on. So you can see when I do it directly onto the plate. So this is mixing directly onto the yeah, plate. Yeah, this is mixing directly onto the plate. I will show you later on mixing on here first as well. And you can see when you mix directly onto the plate, you still get. So you're not going to try and blend those colours? No, no, you can if you want to. Keep rolling back and forth? Yeah, if you yeah. want a, a flat plate of colour, you would just keep going. If you were mixing on the plate? Exactly. Yeah. I like to have... Texture. Yeah. Globs. Yeah. <laughs> so then we get our piece of paper, which I've had, we've had to put off screen because we haven't got quite enough room. And we just simply pop it onto the plate, line it all up and rub it all over. It is as simple as that, guys. So you don't need a, um, um, a pressing tool. You just use your hand. You just use your hand. So rub it all over. Now, this should take most of the paint off. I would predict we're probably going to have a little bit of paint left on the plate. And I was correct just because we had a little bit... And this is the result. So you can see here what is coming up on the paper was what was directly on the plate and then it works back from there. So what we could see before we printed is behind all of these dots which we laid down. So you've got two choices now. You can either print directly off of here and take a ghost print or you can also then lay more colour down on top. So this time I'll go back in with a contrasting colour. A little bit of blue. I'm just going to take some of this off and I will roll over the top of this and then hopefully the idea is mm -hmm. <laughs> that this will lift what was left on the plate. So I'm going to actually try and spread this right out. Oh, so the new um, the new layer of paint is going to lift up that white that exactly. was Exactly, yep. yeah. So the new layer of paint should, in theory, now this is process art, guys, so it doesn't always work the way you want it to, uh, should, in theory, lift off what was left on the plate. All right, so you can see here I've continued to roll to the point where this is quite even now. And then I'll take my next piece of paper. Now when you're pressing down, you do need to be fairly firm. You don't need to go silly with it, but you do need to be fairly firm with it. 
and make sure you get all your corners. So you'll see I often run my hand around the edges. It's probably also a good idea not to wear rings on the finger that you're on the hand that you're no, because you'll get using. you will get lines, lines in your yep. paper. Okay, let's see if this worked how I wanted it to. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So see how that your plate now is clean because this has lifted up what was left. Plus, and you've got the additional. It's it creates layers and texture, mm, and this is mm, what mm. I like so much about the jelly printing. <laughs> it's like the least effort for the most oomph. <laughs> Lots of effort. Lots, Lots of. of <laughs> Don't, don't tell them our secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I'll sh we'll show you once we have finished this tutorial uh, what we use the papers for. But uh, look how stunning that is. You can see all the layers of colour and it creates a lot of texture in there as well without even really trying that hard. All right, so we're going to now show you mixing on the plate before we put it on here. All right, guys, so now I'm going to work with the cool palette and I'm going to mix on this acrylic sheet before I put it onto the plate. So this acrylic sheet I purchased from an art store. I think it was 5 or $6. It wasn't expensive, but the jelly plates, when you get them from Zart, do come with a very thin acrylic A4 sheet if you'd prefer just to use that to start with. It is the easiest thing to use to mix your paints on, but you can also use things like glass um, if you want to just tape up the edges to make it safe. A mirror. A mirror, whatever's flat and hard, and you can see your colours on. All right, so for this bit, we're going to actually lay our colours out on the acrylic sheet. Again, you don't need a lot. Jade's helping. Can I have a green in the middle, please, Jade? Of course. Well, Thank that was you. a bit too much. No, no, that's fine. And I'm just going to roll up and down, because we don't want it to mix together too much. We want to create this sort of gradient mm. and we're going to directly roll it onto our jelly plate okay so when we're using the jelly plate we don't have to use the whole jelly plate mm. so you can just use that middle strip if you wanted to keep this gradient and you can also just use the top or the bottom all right so I like this I'm actually just going to keep this so I will then take my paper the process from here is the same as the last one we're going to pop it on we're going to print it now there's not a lot on there, so hopefully this all should come off all in one. Mm, and then I'm going lovely. to lift it. So from a printmaker's perspective, um, what these are actually what we call a mono print, mm -hmm. um, meaning one. Mono yeah. meaning one. So we're making one print. Um, so we could repeat this process with the blue, green, and yellow gradient, yes. but it'll still be a bit, it'll become a different. Yeah. So each print is unique. You, exactly. And you can use this as a background to then print on again. Yes. The other great thing about these gel plates is this does not take long to dry. Ooh, so exactly. this is yes, already pretty actually, dry to the touch. Because acrylic paint dries very quickly, whereas yeah. printmaker's ink has a longer drying process yeah. so you can use printmakers ink on here i've seen plenty of people do that but it does mm. take a fair bit of dry Sorry. and if you're impatient like i am <laughs> so i yeah. can i can I, actually print straight over this it's already dry enough for me to print on again yeah and i'd save my printmakers ink for like my lino cut mm. or my um foam board um print yeah yeah so that's it as far as the process is concerned um we will now show you some of the things that we use these papers for. All right, guys. So we finished the process part of it. Yeah, now we've got all this gorgeous paper. Now we've got paper. all this beautiful paper. <laughs> what do we do with it? <laughs> well, um, we did our life drawing extra mm -hmm. um, session, which is where we had the life model come in. It was three hours and we brought in all our prepared papers. We did. And I was able to do something like this. Yep. With, I did like collage, so I cut and pasted it out. What mm -hmm. did you do, Mel? So collage is generally what I use it for as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've done, I did a few images. So this one, I made the background with the jelly print plating and uh, jelly oh, plate, plate printing. And then I actually drew over the top and then used some of these other bits to collage. This one I actually collaged onto a background as well. And then same deal here. Mm. What's uh, in the book here? <laughs> okay, here's oh. my little cockatoo man. <laughs> so this one's done, the background I printed directly into the book mm, and then lovely. I printed.
printed onto magazine pages. Yeah, so because that's the other thing too. You don't have to just use no. white paper. No. Because that's like a resource. That's a raw resource. Mm -hmm. So we could uh, reclaim materials. So we could use old magazines or yep. old children's books or things that we think would actually might end up um, being thrown out. Yeah. We can reclaim them. The only thing I would say if you're going to use those types of materials is you want to steer away from anything that's too glossy just mm. because it tends to move around a little bit on the plate. On the plate, yeah. So you won't... So like these pieces where you've used old music paper. Yeah. Which is so lovely. You, you get... So that's what the reverse is and then the printed piece yeah. is quite lovely. So yeah. you've got these lovely um, layers of imagery coming through. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So Jade's used hers, one of hers, so, a lovely background here. Yeah, so I have created a print. Um, I created the background with the jelly plate printing mm -hmm. and then the, the black image, I have actually created a foam board uh, printing plate yeah. and then printed it as a, um, as a relief print. I'm not sure if everyone knows that I am a printmaker as yes. well. <laughs> Yeah, so I think a lot of people know Jade for her ceramics, but you started with printmaking. That was where you started, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, printmaking most recently yeah, I started, yeah, yeah, printmaking is my thing. Yeah. So um, we, so in, in studio we have a printmaking press. We do. It's very exciting. Um, and the jelly paint printing is like the, it's like the gateway. It is. <laughs> the gateway. Gateway drug. Drug. <laughs> <laughs> to, to other get, printing, yeah. To, to, to other printing. And so printing is printing is essentially where you put down the ink mm. and then you lay a surface on I it. I think a lot of people, when they think of printing, they think of this, this yeah. black and white kind of... Yes. Whereas yeah. it's so much more, more. than but that. But if you start with all the... So, so basically what this tutorial is also uh, about is starting with the very simple things and yeah. then you grow and expand on them. You just sometimes you just need someone to show you yeah, exactly what the first basic steps are, yeah. and then it just it's an explosion of creativity. Yeah. I mean, everyone who I've used the gel plate with <laughs> up until now has lost their minds over it, and it doesn't matter how old you are. So the kids, the mm. uh, the amount of prints that I get in one session with the kids is amazing because they haven't got any inhibitions as far mm -hmm. as putting colours down. So some of the colour combinations that they actually use are just. I would never ever because I'd be too scared I'm going to get brown but they will put colors, colors together down. that you just yep. wouldn't ever think so you can actually take these can you pass that one too yeah you could take these pages and you could make one of those what are those journals that you call you, you oh, have a junk the, journal yeah junk journals. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could put them together I won't fold it but you could put it together and start to create a journal yeah there's 101 million uses yes. for this. Yeah, I mean, I've completely... The gel plate for me is something I came across... How long? It was probably two, three months ago now. I haven't been doing it for no. that long. Maybe a bit more. No. Doesn't matter, but, but it's always it's something a shiny I've new thing. I've lost my mind over and I can't. I just keep coming back, back to, to it. it. So even yep. when I'm trying other things, so the life drawing and all those types mm -hmm. of things, I keep coming back to the gel printing because I enjoy the process of making pretty papers <laughs> well so. it's also a, it's also a stepping off block yeah for you know um so sometimes when we are a bit flat in our creative process mm -hmm. something like this just going okay you know what i'll just make some papers yeah and then that sort of gets the creative juices flowing again yeah, really so does. um gel plate printing it's pretty amazing it is so um you can do it here can't you you can yeah we do have classes so the one that we're running at the moment for gel plate printing is the australian native inspired collage uh so i'll be releasing some more dates for that soon mm. yeah and so um we'll we're, probably, a, we're yeah. gonna run that again next term and we'll probably get some printmaking some, yes so which i'm excited about <laughs> yeah, i haven't so, done that since high school <laughs> so we'll look at things like foam board printing yeah lino carving we'll look at things that um we can do easily with the press that we have in studio yeah and then if anybody's interested in um doing etching which mm. you know is a little bit more involved yeah. we can also look at that as well but we like um, to start with things that are not too difficult and are the materials for them are fairly easily accessible. it's accessible so yeah. we will put some links in below this about where you can buy the gel press from um where you can get the paints, paints that we've been using today as well. Papers. The papers, all yeah. that sort of thing. So that if you guys want to try it at home, then you will be able to find everything you need. 
Otherwise, as I said, we will be releasing some more dates to the one that we're doing in the studio for the Australian Native Collage, which is more this type of thing. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Um, yep. The dates, I think, I'm hoping I'll get that done in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. That's awesome. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Yes, thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next month. See Bye. You.